Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 27th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to provide an update on an ongoing climate and weather situation occurring over the Bering Sea, over the Chukchi Sea, over parts of Siberia and Alaska, as well as parts of the Arctic Ocean. And this event involves high pressure systems over this region, much warmer than normal ocean temperatures in conjunction with these high pressure systems. And high pressure anomaly values at the 500 millibar level of the atmosphere. So, so up, up above the surface of the atmosphere in the range of about 18,000 feet that are at record levels according to NCEP and NCAR reanalysis for early to mid-September. And in this graphic provided by Zach, um, provided by, not Zachary Leib, this is uh, World Climate Service, which Zachary Leib retweeted, which is how I found out about it. The standard deviation for 500 millibar height anomaly, which is, which is a, a measure of, of atmospheric pressure in this region, is around 5.2 standard deviations or, or about a five sigma deviation from normal atmospheric heights and atmospheric pressures in this region at the 500 millibar level. Now that's that's really, really extraordinary. Translating to statist statistical values, that's a, a rough probability of about one in 3.5 million. So under normal climate con conditions, the probability of such an event would be a, literally a, a less than one in one million affair. So, so this is a very extraordinary event occurring in the atmosphere over much warmer than normal ocean waters at this time. So earlier this week, we did talk about the likelihood of a high amplitude jet stream waves in this region due to much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures. And I'm just gonna go ahead and recap the situation a little bit for you guys so you can understand what's going on. It's worth noting that sea surface temperatures in the Bering Sea and into the Chukchi Sea range from about three to 2.5 degrees Celsius above normal up to around 4.5 to 4.6 degrees Celsius above normal at this time with a very large pool of much warmer than normal water surrounding this region as well. Notably, this region is, is the hot spot, but we have much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures ranging all the way from Japan in the west to the US, central west coast and the east northwards. So a very significant pool of much warmer than normal sea surfaces. This warmer than normal sea surface environment is providing a, a surface impetus that influences the jet stream. And, and what we've been seeing are high amplitude jet stream waves over the Eastern Pacific near Alaska, near the West Coast of Canada and the West Coast of the United States with projections for these waves to range well into the Bering Sea and up into the Arctic Ocean region of the Chukchi Sea over the next two days with upper level high pressure systems cycling into the ridge. And, and we, have, we have tended to see this pattern ever since early September began as these very high, these, these record height anomalies at the 500 millibar level indicate. Just looking at the surface and, and how these, these ridge patterns in the jet stream and these very intense high pressure systems at various levels of the atmosphere can, can reflect on surface conditions or reflect 
from surface conditions and the kind of telegraphic exchange, we see we see quite a lot of of movement of air and moisture toward the north in the region of Alaska and the Bering Sea with a plume, an atmospheric plume of moisture rising up from all the way from the tropics over hundreds of miles of ocean stretching up through Hawaii and through the middle latitudes all the way to the Aleutians. And with some of these air packets being exchanged with a circulation that then runs into the Bering and into the Arctic Ocean with rather high atmospheric moisture levels in this zone as a result. I'm going to go ahead and advance this model a little bit and show the movement of this moisture projected over the next 24 hour period, as well as the movement of surface winds and into the 48 hour time frame, seeing this plume of moisture emerging over the Arctic Ocean with, with rather high atmospheric water vapor levels, indicating another indicator of, of heat content in the atmosphere. Now, also looking at surface temperature anomalies, would like to note that this whole mechanism is, is a big energy transfer of heat into the Arctic. And what we are seeing right now is Arctic surface temperature anomalies in the range of two degrees Celsius overall with quite a lot of, of considerably above normal surface temperatures in the range of 10 degrees Celsius to possibly as high as, as 13 or 14 degrees Celsius above normal over the central Arctic. And over the next couple of days, these anomaly values are projected to intensify as we have energy transfer running in from the Pacific through the, the ridge pattern that I'm describing to you so that, that, that appears to be associated with much warmer than normal sea surfaces as well as through Siberia, where there, there's been a consistent warmer than normal land surface temperature anomaly. So, so two zones in which the Arctic at present is receiving energy transfer from the lower latitudes, which, which is a signature of, of, of polar amplification as it relates to human-caused climate change, where the poles tend to remain warmer during times of, of darkness. And this is in particular during fall, winter, and spring. Now, I'm gonna check how much time we have. Looks like we have a couple minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a, another set of information for you since we have some more time. And I just wanna look at anomalies in the high Arctic, which are related to this energy transfer that we see in the Chukchi Sea and, and through some of the lower and middle latitudes. What I'm gonna be looking at is the DMI surface anomaly map. And here we see the anomaly departures for the 80 degree north latitude to 90 degree north latitude line. So from the 80 degree line to the pole, hitting a, a bit of a spike here as this energy transfer and these high amplitude jet stream waves intensify. So, so a bit of an understanding of the overall context of the Arctic environment at this time, it, focusing in on a region of the world where there appears to be an avenue for heat transfer and energy transfer into the Arctic setting up for fall and possibly winter of 2018. And also noting some very extraordinary atmospheric height anomalies in the 500 millibar range of the atmosphere, which, which are likely a record event associated with various aspects of, of changes to the Earth system related to human-caused climate change, such as warming sea surface temperatures and ice-free regions of the Arctic during fall. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.